All right. Uh, thank you, everybody, for joining us today for the end-to-end -end live video distribution with Red Bee Media and Zixi Webinar. Uh, my name is John Westcott. Uh, I run the partnership and, and marketing groups at Zixi. Today, I'm joined by my colleagues, Chris Fellows, a senior sales engineer for uh, AMIA, uh, European Managing Director David Nordier, uh, and our very special guest, Christian Langbridge, uh, Head of Transformation and Live Video Distribution Solutions at Red Bee Media. Uh, today's agenda will be to give uh, a Zixi overview uh, get uh, an introduction to Red Bee Media and their channel store, how they have standardized on Zixi, uh, with a, including a live demonstration, uh, and then we will take questions at the end. So any questions that you have uh, throughout the presentation, please put them in the, the Q&A tab, and then we will answer uh, as many as we can. Uh, at the end, if we're unable to get to uh, your questions, uh, we do have the, the emails uh, associated with your question uh, log and the appropriate specialist will, will get back to you uh, straight away. So with that, uh, Dave Nordier, please take it away. Thanks, John. And can I just extend a warm welcome to all today's attendees? So let's just kick off with one of today's biggest challenges, the global distribution of live video. In the face of the pandemic that we are all in, there's been a shift away from traditional hardware-based infrastructures. Today, more flexible, software-defined solutions and to succeed in tomorrow's media landscape, content owners and broadcasters need to think about the challenges of delivering broadcast quality content around the globe. But there are a number of things to consider how do we aggregate all this media, which arrives in many different formats from many different places? How do we manage the supply chain and all the different vendors within the workflow? Then there's the cost and complexity of implementing fixed private networks. These are all real, so how do we do this? But more importantly, how can we do this at scale? Today's webinar is about our partnership with Red Bee and how we are jointly solving these issues. So now we understand some of the challenges, let's now dig into how Red Bee's channel store and Zixi's software-defined video platform can assist the media companies around the world with the end-to-end -end live video distribution over IP. So let's, if, you, if I may, let's start off with Zixi. And for the benefit of everyone new to Zixi, I wanted to take a couple of minutes just to provide an overview of who Zixi is and what we do. Zixi was established some 14 years ago, and we are headquartered out of Waltham, Massachusetts. And we are the industry leader for enabling dependable live broadcast quality video over any IP network, any protocol, any cloud, and any edge device. Our award-winning software-defined video platform offers cloud-based technologies for broadcasters, content owners, and over-the-top video providers, making it easy and economical to source, manage, and distribute live events, as well as 24-7 linear channels securely and at scale. So you'll hear the term, the software-defined video platform, more than once today, I'm sure. But to help explain this, allow me to break this down into four pillars. Most of you will probably have heard about the tried and tested Zixi protocol. And as you know, a protocol is required to deliver broadcast quality content from one point on the network to another. A major benefit for our customers is that Zixi platform supports not only our own implementation, but 16 others, such as RIST, SRT, RTP, HLS, to just to name a few. The second pillar is the video solution stack. This is the software that manages all, all the protocols and collects analytics, layers of intelligence, such as network bonding, hitless failover, and the ability to do live transcoding and repackaging. All done again over any IP network, any protocol, and across any cloud infrastructure. Another pillar is Zen Master. 
This is our control plane, which allows you to intelligently provision, deploy, manage, and monitor thousands of content channels across your Zixi enabled network. Think of ZenMaster as your own centralized dashboard, which gives you not only the ability to have 24 seven monitoring and alerting, but also enables you to see and rectify issues before they arise. Should there be an issue, ZenMaster provides the tools for root cause analysis with deep atomic level data across the media supply chain, giving you pinpoint insight at operational scale. Here we have the fourth pillar, the Zixi enabled network. And apologies, I'm using a different slide, but it's visual and demonstrates the scale of Zixi deployments and the IP movement around the world. Today, we're delivering over 100,000 instances in over 100 countries to 700 media customers and technology partners. And this is why we can say we're bringing interoperability at scale. Every presentation has a list of their customers, and as you can see, we're no different. Here is a subset of the Zixi customer base, which is made up from the world's leading media organizations. And I think you'll agree that these are the biggest names, and we are proud that they are trusting Zixi for the delivery of broadcast quality content. These range from traditional broadcasters to play out companies and OTT service providers. As you will see, our partner list is growing just as fast with over 200 partners and OEMs, along with the majority of the world's encoders and decoder companies. So when you put this all together, what is a software defined video platform? Well, the software defined video platform enables you to take content from any owner and deliver it through any service provider over to any cloud infrastructure to and from an any OTT platform and provides the ability to leverage any Zixi edge point anywhere in the world. And do this whilst managing the whole process using ZenMaster. The software defined platform is simply not point to point, it's end to end. And with that, I'll hand over to Chris Lambridge for an overview of Redby. Thanks, David. And hi, everyone. It's good to be here. I'm just going to share my screen. Bear with me for one second. Okay, hopefully you can all you can all see that now. Um, so good to be here and um, thank you for giving me a bit of time to talk about Redby Media and uh, Channel Store and how we use the Zigzi platform uh, to, to deliver value to uh, our customers. Um, a bit about Redby first, just to set the whole story into context. We have been um, trading for uh, many years now. Uh, we were born in media, we like to say, um, over 20 years ago, um, where we started with uh, the likes of the BBC and many other public service broadcasters in uh, Europe. Today, uh, we're, we're a leading global company operating across Europe, the Middle East, uh, APAC, and the USA. Um, we see ourselves uh, as a transformational force for our customers. We use our managed services um, operating both broadcast uh, state-of-the-art technology and operations, taking the complexity away from our customers to help them focus on developing their business. We are innovators. We invest significant amounts of um, capex into our platforms to help that transformational journey and we uh, work as a trusted partner not only with our customers but also with our suppliers uh, we believe in this time of great change it's important that uh, these relationships that we build between our customers and our suppliers help information share and lessons um, and learned lessons to really help drive value and support our customers and ultimately the end consumer overall. And our, our mission, um, as I said before, about managing complexity is really um, driven to help reduce uh, the costs, both CapEx and OpEx in your business chains. Also, um, we like to talk about how we can grow revenue and add opportunities into your business. And lastly, 
really working on how we can get you speed to market, which is such an important element today um, to reach consumers because the market has become increasingly competitive with not just the traditional broadcast and distributors out there, but also the new OTT entrants. We, I talked about the partnership element to us earlier on. Um, we work to perform long lasting partnerships. We, and we pride ourselves on our ability to offer security um, and stability. Um, we have a great deal of competence in our business uh, with experience that spans not only play out, but also media management, post-production, content discovery, EPG, access services and captioning, but also distribution and encoding. That's all uh, comes as part of the bundled services that we offer when we uh, work with you. Important um, to note also is our certifications. So uh, security uh, being one of the prime important uh, factors that we have today, we are proud to sport our badges with ISO 27100 and 2701 and our DPP accreditations. Those aren't easy to win. And especially in today's IP media enabled workflows, they're increasingly important, as I said, to ensure that your content's protected, no matter which network it's moving over. Red B offers truly end-to-end -end managed services. The idea is that we want to be able to offer services to any content owner uh, and offer a glass-to-glass -glass, uh, proposition. We want to be able to work across um, all of these different areas into content discovery, access I've mentioned before, play out, post-production, media management and distribution, end-to-end. -end. You don't need to uh, use all of these. In fact, we offer all of these services in a modular way. Um, so you don't have to take everything, but um, if you want, everything's there, fully end to end. And in fact, today we were demonstrating to other uh, partners how we can have a complete end to end software enabled video uh, workflow. Today, I want to tell you a bit more about distribution, which is my own area of responsibility. So we're just gonna dive into that for a second. Distribution for us um, includes what we call our next generation MCR. So working in the uncompressed domain, um, the ability to route uh, video over a completely IP enabled network uh, using the latest private cloud uh, infrastructure. So mainly handling contribution into broadcast playout we're able now to bring uh, feeds over uh, native 2110 or 2022-6 streams, process those and pass those um, into the playout uh, systems of choice. It doesn't have to be Redby Playout, as I said earlier on. We also offer Channel Store, which I'm gonna go into a bit more detail in a second, and that's really exciting. It's a, it's a multi-format uh, meet me room. So its purpose is there to bring, allow content owners, uh, live TV signal providers and radio signal providers to meet up with distributors and share that content in an effective uh, and cost-effective way. We also offer uh, compression services. These are also software-defined, uh, working across our hybrid cloud to deliver, uh, take those uh, SDI or 22-6 services from our playout solutions and deliver those back through Channel Store and out to OTT or any other uh, distribution solution that you might wish to use. Teleport's an important part of our services. We're happy that we have our own facilities, both in Stockholm in Sweden and Hilversum in the Netherlands, where we manage our own downlink services and uplink services to bring those live signals in. But we're not limited to that. It just provides a very cost-effective way to bring in those signals at bulk. And again, just to emphasize the benefits around our distribution services. The idea is that we can aim to bring any live source to any live destination reliably and with uh, security. And that's really why ZigC offers such a great benefit to us and to our customers. So we're gonna dive into a bit more detail into Channel Store now, which is the platform we use 
uh, Zigzee the most on. Um, what you can see here is uh, a diagram really that shows uh, a simplified broadcast chain. So we have the production uh, streams, be it uh, video on demand or live TV being driven through uh, the uh, play out and distribution chain. Here you can see how uh, channel stores actually deployed in a geo redundant way. So we have a uh, channel store services hosted on our networks across multiple availability zones in Red B in different facilities hosted globally uh, in London. Manchester, Netherlands, in Hilversum, Stockholm, Paris, for example. Channel Store is not only able to receive uh, the streams outbound from our own encoding and playout solutions. As I said earlier on, we're pulling uh, content from our own teleport services and also secure internet delivery, which is where we'll come to Zixi um, in a moment. Uh, so we have multiple sources coming in. We also have other sources joining us in commercial DCs where we have our IP pops present. These commercial DCs are also distributed all over the world in order to bring in multiple signals and increase the number of live channels that we have available. The pop here acts as a gateway. It acts as a gateway to securely hand off those signals, not only to distributors that may want to pick up in two geographically redundant sites, but also where we can provide direct uplink into the cloud using uh, direct connections like Amazon AWS uh, Direct Connect, for example. All of those handover points then allow platforms such as satellite, pay TV, cable, uh, and OTT to receive those streams. And in fact, in many cases today, we see uh, one platform offering all of those different uh, outbound formats. But of course, uh, we see OTT growing increasingly in importance. But hopefully you can see here, here how the channel store aggregates multiple channels from multiple sources, delivers those in a secure way over a combination of IP pops and secure internet delivery to those distributors. Today, we have about 1,000 TV and radio signals live on the platform and about 10,000 on net ready to go. We don't obviously put live TV channels if there are no takers to maintain uh, bandwidth efficiency. Now today, just to point point onto the secure internet delivery side, we're using a combination of Zixi and SRT protocols. Um, those are important for us because of the uh, features that you should well, you should know that Zixi offer, including security and forward error correction. But increasingly that's important um, gateway into our services, whereas uh, teleports becoming less and less frequent. Now, I wanted to mention how we're monitoring those signals because part of our service, as I mentioned earlier on, is this security and quality assurance that we offer. We do that by offering probing monitoring and probes across all key network boundaries. And that includes not only boundaries in the commercial DCs that we operate in, but also our own premises and also into the unmanaged network area. Now, what I'm showing here is the difference between what we call an on-prem pop on the right-hand side. That's a local non-commercial DC setup where we're able to put our equipment uh, into a signal provider or a signal taker who aren't in the commercial DCs. And here we're able to then use Zenmaster and Zigzee to monitor and contribute video flows into our central platform. It's very straightforward and very flexible and very cost effective because then we're working on these unmanaged networks uh, such as the internet to bring those signals securely in. All of the data managing the monitoring data is all pulled into our central global monitoring platform where our teams are operating 24 seven and able to pinpoint any issues in the network and then work together with our signal providers and distributors to work out what's going wrong and quickly address the issue. And in this way, we can offer redundant feeds and high availability. Now, now Zixi's incorporated SRT within their software development platform this has been a great opportunity for us. Before SRT was uh, a, a kind of separately managed protocol and we had a Zixi only platform. 
Um, now we're able to do both and use the Zen Master platform over the top to uh, manage and monitor all of those streams that we're bringing in. And of course, the reason why we have these SRT and Zixi streams, and not just only Zixi, is that many of the sort of video sources we wouldn't consider to be prime broadcast content with high security needs. They are um, much lower cost and they're happy to take content over an SRT protocol. One of the next steps for us as part of our roadmap del delivery in the future is to simplify and ac uh, the access level for all these different types of monitoring platforms into one layer and then offer that back to the, our customers through a customer portal. Today, these tools are used by operations teams primarily to support and manage the stack. We want to make those available and we see the APIs offered through the Zen Master platform as a really um, really great opportunity to do that. So we're looking forward to working together with the Zixi team on how we can extract all of the data and then use that within our combined monitoring platform. Okay, so with that ado, hopefully if you do have questions, um, please do put them into the uh, chat box, uh, which is in, in the Zoom call, so we can get to those later on. But now what I'd like to do is just hand over to uh, my colleague Chris, who will then take you through a live demo of the Zen Master platform, including part of our setup. Okay, thank you, Chris. So if I share my screen, you should be able to see my Zen Master user interface. <clears throat> so here, what I've done is I've accessed the Red Bee Zen Master account. So each of our customers has their own URL. And after they log in using single sign-on or a simple username and password, you're greeted with the dashboard. So the dashboard is a 40-foot high-level overview of the entire Zixi ecosystem and shows me the health of that system. So on the left-hand side here, I see the three software components that make up our platform. So feeders, broadcasters, receivers. We also then have a logical layer called sources, channels, and targets. So a source is anything that's arriving into the platform a channel is how something goes across the platform. So say, for example, I could have a main source and a backup source. I can group those into a single channel and then I can distribute that channel out to a final target. <clears throat> here, just from this, uh, this dashboard view, I can see any open issues. So on the right hand side here, so I can see that Red B have a, a source that is in error. So it's the source called Monaco one underscore A and the CC errors on that source. So I don't need to spend time investigating that issue. I can see straight away from this dashboard that the source has some problems and they could ring the source provider and ask them to correct it. Um, we've got a nice way to be able to group all these components and alarms into grids as well. So if I select grids here, I can see the guys at Red Bee have, have created a few grids. They've decided to split some components from uh, Al Sharika, which is a customer of theirs. And so if I select the top grid here, Basically what they've done is they've selected all of the sources coming into the platform from Al Sharika, and you can see the thumbnails for all those sources. So I can see the thumbnails, I can see the health and the status of each of those sources. And if you can imagine, you know, if I had this as a, as a, as a penalty box view, what I could do is have this as a blank screen. And if, if any of these sources was to go into error, the source that has the problem would be highlighted to the MCR or the engineers looking at this screen and they knew that they would uh, have to investigate that. So what I'm going to do now is just um, there's some uh, you know uh, private data on some of uh, Red Bee's customers further on in the, uh, the the presentation. So I'm just going to flick across to the my demo account here. And what we did yesterday is we we sent two streams from the Red Bee account over to to my demo account. Um, so here I see the two streams Red Bee one and two. In order to add new streams onto a Zixi platform, all I'd need to do is select add. And then they have quite a few options here to be able to add different sources. So we can add uh, sources from, from Zixi uh, components. So that could be any of our 200 plus uh, partners or, or other Zixi uh, software components. We can take streams directly from Media Connect or create new sources on Media Connect. Um, use monitor only. So that's uh, layering Zen Master on top of existing Zixi platforms. Uh, hitless failover means that we can take multiple source inputs into a platform um, take those in, correct any latency differences between the different sources and produce a, a high quality broadcast output. And we can actually do a seamless switch between those sources. Um, transcoding and PID mapping, so functions inside the Zixi platform that we can offer to clients. 
um, UDP inputs, SRT inputs, RIST inputs, and NDI inputs for, for production workflows. So to create one of these workflows, all I'd need to do is select this and enter the details. So yesterday we, we added these sources. So if I select the first red B1 here, I can see the source coming from Red B. I can see the, uh, the thumbnail here. I can see the stream information around that source. We also have the option to, to play that in high res on a VLC player or to play that using a, a built-in WebRTC player to the browser. So you could actually preview that in the browser window. If I select content analysis, on every source that's coming into the Zixi platform, we do TR101 and priority one and priority two analysis. So I can flag any alarms and we can also send uh, email alerts to groups of users or individual users to show that certain sources are in error. We also look inside the IP stream at the video picture itself. So I can highlight alarms on frozen video, blank picture and audio problems as well. So within ZenMaster, we, we keep sort of a database around all this, this information as well. So I can select a given time, time frame and look back at the details on that source and the analytics on that source. So by selecting the history tag, it's going to load up my, uh, my details for this red B1 source. And I can see any CC errors, blank picture, frozen video, and I can see exactly what time those issues may have occurred. If I scroll down a bit, we are also checking the network. So I can see any recovered packets. I can see non-recovered packets. I can see any reconnections. Uh, we're also monitoring the jitter and the RTT on the internet connection. We can monitor the, the bit rates coming into the, to the, uh, the Zixi platform. We're checking frame delivery percentage. So this is important. If I do drop packets, um, what are those drop packets related to? Are they related to the video PID, the audio PID? More importantly, are they related to a SCSI 35 marker that could be uh, used to trigger a downstream ad, ad insert system? Encoder quality. So here we're using our own estimated PSNR scoring. So here we give, uh, we give the source uh, a quality score. So I can see this source is, uh, is coming in between 30 and 40. So it's a reasonably good quality source. If the source sort of drops below 30 to 20, um, we're going to start seeing some micro blocking on that picture. And we know that the, the source quality is poor. If you can imagine, I could run this uh, report over the past year or the past six months, and I could have some information to, uh, to go back to the source provider with and ask them to improve the quality of that source. And then finally, packet timing. So packet timing show me the, uh, the duration that it takes for the packets to arrive from the sending device to the Zixi platform. And the important um, you know, differentiator from the Zixi protocol to some of the others on the market is that we use a, a fixed latency here, which is very important when you're doing sporting events. So I can see the fixed latency on this source is uh, three and a half seconds. I can see most of my packets arrive under two. We've got a, an occasional glitch here where it took over three seconds um, so you know I think we've got the latency about right but you know this this graph can be used to help uh, reduce the latency okay and um, we also track other items around sources so I'm just going to jump to a source with um, SCSI markers on so if I select my SCSI source here I see I've now got this SCSI 35 tab and this is showing me the arrival time of uh, any SCSI 35 markers on the stream input as well as seeing the arrival time, I can also see all the details. So here I can see the details uh, inside that SCSI marker. And obviously they can be used to, to check that we've, uh, we've triggered the right downstream commercial ad break, for example. Okay, and then finally, um, just a, a quick show into the, uh, the PIB mapping that we can perform as well. So here I have a couple of, uh, of examples. So I've got a PID mapping source here. So if I look at the details here, so here I see a stream and it's got um, lots of different programs. Say, for example, I could have program one and four could be a, a language that I decided that I didn't want to distribute to a certain part of the world. I can actually use the PID mapping and normalization within the platform to remove those two programs. So here what we've done is we've taken the same source, we've applied the PID mapping, and I can see that the programs one and four have now been removed. So it's really flexible and also allows you to normalize any, any material coming into the platform. Okay, so moving on to channels. So as I mentioned before, a channel is, is how a source goes across the Zixi platform. So here I see I have a single channel for my red B sources. That channel is built up from the red B source one and the red B source two. If I select my diagram here, I can see that the sources are going to a single broadcast cluster with two broadcasters inside them and they're being pulled from a single target. 
So this means that if um, one of these broadcasters was to fail, the source and the target would go across to the second broadcaster to pull the stream. And the streams are always alive in that way. And within the broadcast cluster, we can actually have as many broadcasters as we want for load balancing and um, redundancy. And then finally, a target, so outputs from, uh, from the platform. So if I wanted to add a new output, all I need to do is select add, and then I have lots of different options to choose from. So I could write to a HTTP server as uh, HLS or MPEG dash. I could send out a Zixi, RIST, UDP, RTMP for social media platforms, SRT or NDI for production workflows. So here I see my, uh, my red B taker here. So if I select that output and I come into history, <coughs> I see the history graph around that output. I can see if I've had any drop packets, any non-recovered or recovered packets between the Zixi platform and the receiving end target. And again, I see the same packet delivery and, and bit rate here to show me the exact stream that was arriving at my receiving point. We've also got a new feature that the guys at Red B haven't implemented just yet uh, called maps. So within maps, I can select uh, this Red B map here and I can select to view this channel. And so this is showing me the exact path that that stream's taking. So as I mentioned, we're taking two sources from uh, Red B in the Netherlands. We're actually sending those across to uh, our office in, in Boston here, where I've got a broadcast cluster, which is made up of six broadcasters. And then I'm sending these, this stream back from the broadcasters to my home here in Nottingham. So I can see the, uh, the path of those streams and I can have it on a nice geographical user interface. The advantage of this is, say I was taking lots of streams from lots of different um, source providers around the globe. Uh, if a few of those were to fail, this would go red, the, the connection would go gray. And I could actually see and quickly easily pinpoint if a certain part of, you know, say Central Europe, the, some ISPs have gone down. I'll be able to see all of the items in that physical location, that geographical location have failed and be able to see that easily on the map. Okay, we also have reports to prove any of these, uh, these statistics. So we have uptime stats and usage reports. So uptime reports can be really useful to show um, the percentage of uptime on certain sources or targets. And we can prove SLAs and we can actually show the downtime, over, downtime of any sources or any targets over any selected time period. And we can actually show the reason for that downtime as well. And then finally, um, remote access. So within remote access, we can access third party devices through ZenMaster. So this is using a reverse SSH tunnel. So say for example, if I wanted to access this Elemental Live, I could select this open button, use a reverse SSH tunnel and access the UI for the Elemental Live. So not only are we monitoring all the sources, being able to orchestrate the sources within the ZenMaster platform, if any of the sources were to fail, we could actually go in, correct the issue, all through one single user interface. Okay, John, I think that's a, that's a quick demo. All right. Have we got any questions? Thank you, Chris. Um, so uh, as we move into the to the QA uh, Q and A part uh, of the uh, presentation, uh, we've got a, a few uh, key takeaways. Uh, while we're we're doing this, uh, please put any questions that you might have into the Q and A tab. Um, so what what did we hear today? Uh, with Red B's channel store, it is easy to aggregate and distribute live channels globally, anytime, anywhere. Uh, using any of the 17 protocols supported by the software defined video platform. This partnership allows broadcasters and content providers to leverage high reliability, quick setup times, uh, exceptional signal quality without having to handle uh, signal act, uh, acquisition on their own, all managed uh, with the dynamic Zen master control plane. And lastly, you can realize the flexibility and modern uh, economics of IP with low latency live video distribution over public IP without needing to stand up uh, expensive private networks. Um, a little bit of uh, self uh, promotion. Um, we have uh, four more uh, thought leadership uh, presentations over the next 10 days. 
uh, as part of our uh, uh, virtual IBC replacement uh, next Thursday, uh, uh, this Thursday uh, coming up, uh, the Gateway to Better Delivery with our partner Sencor. Uh, next Tuesday, uh, Universal Origination and Virtualized Workflows with the Software Defined Video Platform. Uh, 5G and the Future of Broadcasting next Wednesday with uh, participants from Verizon, Bloomberg, and Amazon Web Services Wavelength Zone. Uh, very exciting. And then uh, to finish up, a new partnership with Tag Video Systems Monitoring and Delivery uh, over IP. So uh, questions. Uh, we have a few questions that uh, we can go to. Um, first, uh, for Christian, over fiber networks, do you require multicasting enabled? Yeah, great question. Um, we do use multicast when we're running services over our own fiber network. It's the most efficient way to make all these channels available at various parts, but we use smart routing to make sure that we're not carrying a thousand channels in multicast over every single pop. Uh, another for Christian, has either company, uh, and I think you guys have a good solution for that, addressed uh, uh, advertising signaling issue, being able to do dynamic ad insertion uh, regardless of whether it's live, linear, or OTT? Yeah, another good question. I mean, I so I see I, the way we see addressable advertising is primarily through uh, the insertion of these SCSI markers. I think when from a channel store perspective, we will pass through whatever SCSI thirty five is handed to us, um, and we see increasing interest in the ability to monitor for the presence of SCSI thirty five. Um, from the uh, distributor end to ensure that uh, their ad insertion engines will work. I think the question here is, um, can you do it in parallel um, and make sure it's in sync? And the answer is yes, um, if the source is the same and that uh, we are able to uh, use our playout solution um, to uh, insert 104 messages in the in the baseband video prior to it being packaged um, compressed and packaged for either live uh, linear or ott it's at that it's at that compression stage where we would be converting those 104 markers into 35 and then of course it's being delivered in sync in both parallel streams i hope that's what you were asking thomas thank you uh christian uh we'll go to chris uh fellows uh can you see TR, TR101 and content alarms on uh, protocols outside of Zixi, RIST, or SRT? Yes, you can. Yep, so we can see all the same information, whether it's RIST or um, SRT, as we do on the Zixi protocol. We can also perform hitless failovers on those protocols as well, or we could have a, a joint hitless failover made up of different protocols. So you could have a main as Zixi, for example, and a backup as RIST, and we'd be able to form a a hitless failover on the two. Uh, a follow-up uh, with you, uh, Chris. Um, do the video streams go into Zen Master? No, they don't. So the video streams stay in the platform at all times. Um, we don't send any of our clients' video streams up to the cloud. Um, it's all securely kept in the platform. It's only the thumbnails that are passed up to the cloud. Great. Uh, back to, to Christian, uh, how quickly can you add new channels? Um, well, actually, if, if the distributor is already connected and the live channel is on net, we can add the channel in a matter of minutes. Um, if the channel's uh, in our system, but we're, let's say not live, it could take uh, approximately a day. Um, of course, if it's um, an unconnected distributor and they want a new channel, then we have to go through the process of a cross-connect um, if that's where they want to join us. So it really depends on whether the channel's live or not. And therefore, in the most popular channels, we can get live very, very quickly because we tend to have those running already. 
another one for you, Christian. Uh, what kinds mm -hmm. of uh, service level agreements are you offering? Well, so if we if we go for the dual delivery method, um, so handing off in two different redundant locations, we can go up to night four nines. Um, if customers only want to buy one end, um, it would drop to uh, 99. Uh, I think there's one other complication in there, which is that um, where uh, we're using or relying on signal providers, if they um, are proving to be problematic or low quality, that can impact the SLA. So we're in the process now of trying to work out um, who's truly reliable as a signal provider um, and making sure that we almost give them like a Moody's grading, you know, so are they AAA or not? Um, but we land, traditionally we land somewhere f uh, in uh, three nines and a five, but we can get as high as four nines. All right, thank you, Christian. Um, that is uh, the, the, the end of our questions. Um, we've launched a, a poll to uh, see how uh, uh, our attendees today uh, would like to be followed up. So please um, put your answers into that pop-up screen that, that you have seen. Um, you can also uh, reach out to uh, us uh, individually uh, at uh, our uh, websites uh, and our uh, contact uh, emails. Um, and then everybody will uh, uh, that has uh, attended or registered for this uh, webinar uh, will get uh, a recording of this uh, sent. So uh, I'd like to thank everybody for uh, taking uh, the last 45 minutes uh, out of their day. We appreciate it and we look forward to, to speaking with you soon. Thank you, Christian. Thank you, Chris. Thank you, Dave. Thank you. Thank you.